Greetings and salutations. Hope everyone's having themselves a mighty fine day. Like the video, subscribe, check the description, do all the YouTube things, and we on. I think is it the, is it the death of a Phoenix magi magician, the life of a Phoenix magician? What is it called again? The end of a Phoenix magician. So let's. I'm actually excited for this one. This one from a from a title looked interesting. I'm surprised to see Shuri is involved. So it seems that a lot of these are like loosely interconnected. Because a lot of this stuff has been kind of gone back to the actual clan, all things considered. So let's see how this turns out. So we go hop right in, man. The name my father gave me was Shuri. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Never mind then. So, see, so someone's named Shuri. Dumbfounding, isn't it? They say having a god's name is blasphemy, but having a Nastika's name can get you slaughtered altogether. Jeez. Be it the Nastika themselves or their followers, if they learn a mere human bears their name, they will come and kill that human right away. This art rap? Can't tell what this is. And yet, that is how my father named his child. All because he wanted to see the beauty that enchanted even the gods just once before he died. He just because he's horny? No way <laughs> he did this. That's crazy. One time, he even followed some Phoenix magicians in order to make a San Yoga contract. Praying up the temple, asking for information and adventuring, it was a lot harder than he had thought. It might have been bad luck, but the group my father used to follow did not manage to meet Shuri. And when and we heard that as soon as my father left the group, they did meet Shuri. Damn, Shuri said, I'm not trying to meet this bozo. As the one whom good fortune was passing by, he ruined his body and mind, drowning his anger in alcohol and drove away the friends who cared for him. He lost everything. Dang. With a body so drenched in alcohol and grease that he couldn't even go to the bathroom on his own, dying day by day, the only thing that kept bl blurting out was Shuri Nim appear tomorrow. Ridiculous. As soon as Shuri Nim appears, your child will die. He's, he was that kind of father after all. Unfortunately or fortunately, my father met Shuri by making his own child a sacrifice. Really? Wait, what? So he kills you. I'm, I'm going to hold on. Unfortunately or fortunately, my father met Shuri by making his Shuri, by making his own child sacrifice, he fulfilled his lifetime wish and died. So he died. My father, who was already at the brink of death, gazed upon the Nasica he had long he had longed for so much, and fainted in uncontrollable joy, never to get up again. I don't, I don't like him. I do not like your dad. Your dad is not is not the one. Good rip, rip bozo. Like Jesus Christ, bro. What's wrong with him? You tweaking over there. Um, yeah, never get up again without even saying a single word to the woman of his dreams. Shuri held out her hand to me. Where's your mom at? Who stood by dazed. She told me that she would sign the San Yoga contract with me since she un unintentionally took away my kin. If I do that, I will go to hell, won't I? Dot, dot, dot. Shuri didn't say anything. Shuri's hair is short here. Her hair was longer before, right? Then Shuri asked me what I was more afraid of, hell or the present life. She said that I had the talent to even to reach the highest ranks as a Phoenix magician, but that otherwise I would have a hard life for as long as I lived with my divine affinity of zero and the weak body I had inherited from my Why do you know that? Vishnu maybe? She should be hanging with me. Okay, hold on. She even said the following. How is such a life different from hell? Damn, one last god. Kubera story and art by Kurigam side story 13 the end of a fiendish magician play my intro Come to think of it Shuri never gave a definitive answer to my question she just talked about how my life would be difficult if I rejected the Phoenix Magician contract. I don't know, bro. I don't know. In the end, I will. I don't. I didn't know if a Phoenix Magician went to hell after death. Shuri had never been to hell after all. Maybe she herself just didn't know and thus didn't give me an answer. Either way, I lived a pretty successful life as a Phoenix Magician. I had high Phoenix Infinity, and good fortune followed me, unlike my father. I reached the, the point where I signed three Fiendish Magician contracts that others would be envious of. Is that... Okay. I, can, I thought I was that soccer for a second. 
I heard a lot of talks about how to use my power this way and that. I was offered a lot of money for bad deeds. When I returned, they kept going like this. As a Phoenix magician, you're going to hell anyways. Why be so picky? Human, humans in this world are something else, bro. Like, you can't talk to me like that. I'll body you. Like, respect me. What the hell is this? You can't just talk to me any which way. Like, I'm nice with it. You're not. You need my help, bozo. The hell? I guess that's why among Phoenix magicians, there were many who lived in a haphazard manner. Interesting. Or maybe they're used to a certain, maybe they're used to magi Phoenix magicians having certain types of traits, characteristics, personality, and ideals. Still, I never crossed certain lines, just in case, since it wasn't known for sure, even, even a Phoenix magician might not necessarily go to hell. There wasn't, if there, if there was anything I thought was wrong, I didn't hesitate to confront even divine magicians. Even though I joked around with my naive friends about how gods are unfair, I held apprehension as well as faith towards them. <laughs> I wanted to believe the principles that determined one's allocation to hell were not just blind faith in the gods and ostracism of the suras. I thought that if if the god is truly fair, he would not judge by that alone. Rather, maybe it was my struggle to redeem myself who had already, gone, who had already chosen the path of a Phoenix magician. But I never thought of myself as a good person. Maybe I was just a human grasping at straws in order to avoid going to hell. When I first met Anand, I thought he was the complete opposite of me. He was called a divine magician who was more like a Phoenix magician than Phoenix magicians themselves. Interesting. From the beginning, something about him felt off. It was only later that I found out that his divine affinity was due to a god class item. Still... He was also the type who never crossed certain lines. Is that true? Because remember when he was in a tournament, he was kind of bodying people because they could come back to life. Unless like the morality was just different because of the time period they were in and whatnot. I'm, I'm willing to admit that. But like, and then seemed to kind of go too far. And his mission was revenge against King Daksha. Like, maybe he just has bad information. I don't know. After becoming the priest of Earth and learning the rumor about Hadi Vishnu, he never killed even in the arena in the arena with resurrection by the stat by the wait sorry wow even after becoming the priest of earth and learning the rumor about Hadi Vishnu he never killed even in the arena with resurrection bitches and standing by okay so so what so he learned his lesson then when I asked him about when I asked him whether he was also concerned about judgment after death like I was he said the following I don't know where the friend who disappeared that day went but since she went berserk due to being tricked and used by Asura, I do not think she was sent to a place like hell. I believe so. So I want to at least leave some possibility to meet my friend while my life while my life before was so much closer to heresy than hers. He looks kind of dejected here. I can see little beard hairs. And he, his eyes look a little more dead. I want to devote at least the rest of my life to the gods and reach her side. In the end, Anand became an honorable priest. I didn't stay with him the whole time, so I don't know what his last moments looked like, but I'm sure he kept his principles until the end and became a great man who would go down in history. But the help of the item must have been a big part of that outcome. His life was an exceptional one. After the Phoenix Magic incident, the majority of Phoenix magicians had lost almost all the power they held and fell down to a position of the ostracized in the group that chose to abandon suras and believe in the gods the people who wanted to prove their faith ostracized as phoenix magicians even harsher since the phoenix magicians had become weak it was easy to deal with them and they were people who even thought it wouldn't be a crime to kill them since they were the ones who made contact with the suras anyway i was also rescued by anon and art ram on more than one occasion those friends those friends told me that the fanatics were the weird ones and not to blame myself, but two priests taking special care of one ordinary person. Even an idiot would realize that I was being a bother to them. Fortunately, for not, fortunately not everyone throughout the universe knew my face, even though I had become a famous Phoenix magician. And even when times someone did recognize me, I could just brush it off as looking similar. And as my face changed over the years, I traveled from one planet to another. Few came to recognize me. There were many Phoenix magicians who took their own lives, pessimistic about their fate that, that had suddenly fallen from grace. But I had rumors that such behavior could affect your path to hell. There's actually like, a, I think in the Bible, 
I think it's a sin to to commit to like to off yourself, self delete, and it's also a um you're like not supposed to die before your parents or something like that. And so the and so since life wasn't hard to the point of of taking it, I just lived. Wasn't my life more uncomfortable than before? No, the opposite. I thought that perhaps from the day I first met Shuri, even if I had chosen to live a normal life without a contract, I wouldn't have lived the hellish life. A life without magic wasn't as bad as I thought. I actually thought that it was more comfortable than before and a lot more fun. I went through all kinds of jobs I can do with my unremarkable physique and met many people. Even for things that could be easily solved by magic, ordinary people with out money needed their own skills ironically my last job was something i desperately wanted to get away from as a child caring for a sick person it was the least it, it was what i could do best that's crazy i got to understand why though i had no family to pass something on to and i didn't feel the need to prepare for old age so i accepted only enough money to make a minimal living it seems that i was working just like that until the very end and then uh I see. That's the moment I died. Looks peaceful. Those people who would send me off, I was able to greet them with a smile. Uh, that's good. It's a satisfying ending. For someone who said he didn't remember anything, you spoke well as soon as I showed it to you. Seeing it reminded me. Haha, <laughs> seeing the life I lived in third person perspective was a fresh experience too. It's rare for a person to come here and look back on their lives with nothing but a smile. Even those who pretend to be carefree shed tears of regret once they see it. Ah, uh, is that the normal reaction? It's not about normal or abnormal. There's, I think he's in hell with Yama. Even in that turbulent life of yours, there was nothing grave enough to remain etched in your heart, in your soul, even after your death. Some people will say that this, this is a refreshing life because there are no regrets left. And some will say that it's been a, f a futile life not having been able to form any genuine deep relationships. Which one are you? Well, it was just fun. It was a fun life. Yamanim, I will guide him. You don't have to personally. No, it is not a soul. It is not a soul one is capable to meet often. So I will guide him personally. Hold my seat for a moment. This is an honor. Yamanim is possible is seeing me off on my own way to hell. Why would you think you're going to hell? Huh? I'm not. I heard that by having one memories revived and having a body created like this, it's all in order to be tormented in hell. Besides, I was a Phoenix magician, the Phoenix magician who signed a contract with as many as four Nasticas. It said that you go to hell if you love, worship, or make a contract with a Sarah. That is something spread by those who want to believe it and those who want others to believe it. I do not consider such things as crimes during judgment. My mate had not done anything like that don't judge and insult her as you please that oh that's that's um it's kadru not, not kadru necessarily it's the kadru's friend who oh that's interesting these are these side stories are a little more interconnected than I, I would say than the other ones that i remember reading the first kind of batch with like wish and stuff that's how it is because there are many who want to be seen as a good person in front of their loved ones from the standpoint of those who only saw that side of them it would be difficult to understand that their family or friends have committed crimes wanting warranting going to hell to want to believe that god's past an unfair judgment is natural in a way it must be very hard don't console a god like that the ones who have it the hardest are you who have to live directly in this world. Forget those those revived memories and go to where you're meant to be. You did well. Oh my god. Curry gum. My heart is filled with happiness. What? <laughs> she did a nice thing? Like that man didn't like go to hell? Or did he or was or was Yama lying? Now I'm scared. Hold on. Did I miss something? But that was cool. That was nice. I like that. You did well. The end of a Phoenix magician next whistling. This is the story of a pink haired magician from the Anatta the chapter. Oh, this is the pink haired guy. I, ah, it's the one who I oh I thought was Art Ram. Interesting. The end of a Phoenix magician. Some question that it wouldn't be an error to say that he had three Phoenix magic contracts at first and then say four, but it is written that he had three contracts. It means that he had three Phoenix contracts and that others would be envious of. Vasuki's magic is not counted in this case. As many expected, Tatsaka's Phoenix magic right. Oh, that is Tatsaka. Right panel came with one plus one package with Vasuki. Historically, most of the few magicians who used San Yoga Tasaka were also able to use Vasuki magic. If his state was if his state was that of the past, human Shuri offered an eye injury here.
suffered. By the time he was rescued, it was already in a state it couldn't be recovered. So after this panel, he grows that side of his bangs to hide his eye. Um, Sir's Phoenix Magicians, right. Uh, the one on the right is Lamgal Utaz from um, chapter season two, chapter 221. He didn't recognize human Shuri and cursed Phoenix Magicians a lot in front of him. And human Shuri did, chimed in with a smile. The creature that looked like a young dragon in the next part is the one animal dragon mentioned in season three, episode 239. The creature was also a rare animal at the time. There was a job to observe them. Since it's... Th that body is a type of preta as mentioned in season 3 episode 227 the body was only given temporary for the sake of conversation and yama took it back in the end so maybe he really did go to heaven or something shouts out to my guy man shout out to the pink hair too i'm i'm, I'm excited to talk about this one we'll talk about it soon y'all be safe have a fine day like the video subscribe to the youtube